Welcome to Publishing Power. My name is Joellen and I am your host today. We have a fantastic visitor with us today. His name is Dan Blank and he is the founder of We Grow Media. Welcome, Dan. Hey, how are you? I'm great. Let me just tell you a little bit about Dan and we have some exciting stuff to talk about today. He helps writers develop a human-centered approach to marketing and reaching their audience. He's also a fellow author of the book, Be the Gateway. It's a practical guide to sharing your creative work and engaging your audience. And that's why we're here today. We wanna to talk a little bit about this. Dan has worked with thousands of writers and amazing organizations who support creative people, such as Penguin Random House, Sesame Workshop, Hatchet Workman Publishing, J. Walter Thompson, a Abrams Books, Writer's House, Kenyon Review, Writer's Digest, Library Journal, and many, many others. And you can find Dan on his blog at wegrowmedia.com or follow him on Twitter and Instagram. So Dan, thanks for coming today. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, well, as I was mentioning, we do editing and we get a lot of questions out there about what's next. People write their book and then they think, uh, okay, I'm done. I can just throw it out there and people will buy it. So I wanted to talk a little bit today because you've worked in consulting with online programs and masterminds and workshops and webinars, all these things. I wanted to talk a little bit about creating an author base and an author website because you had put out a really great post that I was reading and I just wanted to see if you could walk us through about some of the things we need to know when we're creating an author base and that website, the audience. So I view the author website as a part of a larger system. When we think about the idea of what you're referring to as an author base, and I might call an author platform, is this idea of it's not a thing. It's not, oh, I have this great website and then I'm professional. And it really is your ability to communicate with the right people and develop a sense of trust. And we could think of that for authors, this idea of having colleagues and of understanding your readers and showing up where those readers are and putting content out there and engaging with them and building relationships and all that stuff that, quite frankly, needs to happen before you say, uh, my product is ready, I've got my book, I'm ready to put it out there. Mm -hmm. If you wait until that moment, you've waited far too long, you have very few things to do. And the website is a core component of that because if you think about communication and trust, it's how people will find you. If they, they meet you, they hear about you, they see your book, they want to check you out, they put your name into Google or whatever. The website is the one place you get to say, this is who I am. This is where else you can find me. This is what I'm about. It gives you credibility. It allows you to think about, well, who's my reader? What do they want? Who am I? What do I want? So it fits into a bigger ecosystem, but it's sort of that foundational level. Mm -hmm. I'll pause because I feel like I don't know where to go with that. There's so many places to go. <laughs> no, I think that's great. I mean, I was at the book expo in New York and people were going to meet their, you know, hopeful new agents and all of this. And what was really a shock for many people that I saw was that the agents were saying, do you have a following of at least say 10,000 people? This is the typical norm yes. now. This is not special. This is nothing to, uh, you know, in fact, that's kind of a low number for those who really succeed out of the door because we're electronic and you know software as a service also goes on now it's kind of a publisher as a service if you come in and you have everything they'll help you but they're not going to do the work anymore so when you're building your own platform and things like get that can you you know let's back up and tell us how do we do that because some people are still writing and we have many different listeners at different eight, uh, stages so you know we're going to build that platform and what are some key ingredients yeah, that's a great question. And just to note on the, the 10,000 follower thing, I, I do hear that a lot. And I talk to a lot of different people throughout publishing. <laughs> I always feel like that number itself is, it, it, it's just something people are, it's like a stand in. Because what an agent or a publisher wants is this idea that they don't know how to sell your book. So if you prove to them that you know how to sell it, right. it makes their life so much easier. It makes the risk they take on so much better. So if you think about the core components of a platform, so from a technical standpoint, there are things like the author website, mm -hmm. your, your kind of home base, an email newsletter, which is some place for someone to say, I like you, I wanna hear from you. And I use email, this main platform, and I wanna hear from you when you're ready. Mm -hmm. So that's something I work on a lot. From that is obviously social media, which is showing up not just where your readers might be, but in a social method. So we have things like Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Goodreads, which 
we can feel free to talk about. Mm -hmm. There are offline things. There are authors I've worked with who are really into in-person kind of stuff, that sort of thing. And then I think there's the underlying things that are part of this. We could talk about it in context of a, of a website, which is knowing your readership knowing what engages them, knowing who your comparable authors are. And then you might have done that in like a, a proposal or a query letter. If you think about it for a website or a newsletter, it helps you figure out what a lot of maybe your writers are thinking, which is, well, I don't have a book out, so why do this? And I don't want to talk to people. I just want to write a book. I just want to be an author and let everyone else do that. And I don't know who my people are. My, my readers are people who love a good story. This sort of vague, vague thing. And all of that's fine. I don't begrudge people starting there. But what that says also is that you're not willing to do the work to figure out, well, what other books do they read? What conferences do they go, do they go to? What do they, what do, who do they follow online? You know, if you tell me that your readers, your readers don't use email, they don't use social media, they, it's sort of like saying like, wow, like it's this needle in the haystack. And I don't know if that's really true. So these are some of the components and there's probably more to that, but I can kind of start there to get us into the author website conversation. <laughs> sure, sure. And I know that you had mentioned that it's important once you build these is to own the system basically to, to make sure it's yours. Um, this is a, an important point. I look at a lot of examples. So a lot of people will say, well, I joined Twitter, so that's my platform. And the problem with that is that you don't own that platform. Twitter itself will change. Twitter could accidentally bounce you off their platform. Twitter could just change something. There could be a trend where your audience moves away from Twitter. Mm -hmm. And I've seen this quite often where someone will build a platform on one network and they feel comfy cozy there and they don't expand. They don't say, well, I'm gonna build a website I'm going to build an email newsletter list. I'm going to try to transition people over to that. And I'm also going to join Instagram because I, I found that I enjoy it and that my readers are there too, where you have an ecosystem. And the platform that you have, again, it should be that you have multiple ways to reach your audience. One, because it makes it safer for you. Mm -hmm. And if you think about, you know, one way to look at publishing is publishing is a business. Mm -hmm. Writing does not have to be a business. I grew up as an artist. All of my friends throughout my life were the weird art, drama, poetry, photography, artist kids. I married an artist. All I do all day is talk to writers. So I get that you can create for the sake of creating. But when you enter into the business of publishing, if you don't have things like a website, a newsletter, a way to reach people, a way to communicate that you write, that if you go to something like a book expo, you have a card that says, here's where you can find me this is what I write and why. It's not quite a profession. It's not even quite a serious hobby. It's sort of this little thing that you half bake, like a lot of the hobbies that we have in our basement or our garage. And that's not judging. It's just if you feel like I have this big goal and it's not happening, usually it's because we're not taking it seriously enough. We talk a, a lot about that, or at least it seems like I've been talking to a lot of different um, guests recently about the mindset of an author of or an entrepreneur, uh, the idea that this is part, if you, you can write, as you said, for pleasure and, and for that need, but if you want to monetize, if you want to live on that as an income, as a career, then you need to plan. And many of the successful authors I've talked to had a five, 10 year plan to, you know, wean themselves off of their day job to get to the, you know, and then they had, and it was also multiple streams of income. And one of the fun things I heard recently, it was two, two really great bloggers, Joanna Penn and Sasha Black, also with uh, the Alliance of Independent Authors. They had both mentioned that they were looking at, you know, multiple streams of income and they were not talking about writing. <laughs> they were talking about rental incomes and other things that were passive to give them the time. And yeah. I, I found that very interesting. So it is really to, and I know that you do consulting and yeah. that, you know, so that's really stepping back before you're writing the book and the big picture, I guess, where <laughs> that's what we're talking about. Yeah, definitely. Right. And so you had also mentioned that you should build your website in anticipation of these things. So when we're doing that, is there anything that we need to particularly be thinking about your, that connects us better perhaps with us? Gosh, totally. So you have to do all of that. You don't have to do anything. I would encourage you to do all of this so far before you need it and not because of me or because any 
guru is telling you to do it. It's for your own good. Now I'm talking to my two year old. Um, <laughs> it's this idea that I'm thinking of a client I have right now where he's going from zero to, to platform, built a website, got active in social media. We're mapping out the, the, the people in his space where he's writing into. And the whole point of with a website is saying, well, how do you describe what you do? I was talking to a different writer yesterday. The, the, the author bio is, is, is a heart-wrenching thing for them to write because it's difficult to write about yourself. Right. It's difficult to describe, well, tell me what you write and why. I've been to so many conferences where people are ready to pitch an agent and they're freaking out in the hallway. And the whole question is, hey, hey, who are you? Tell me what you're writing. This should be as natural thing and they don't know. They don't know how to write it. So you build the website before you need it. We'll talk, there's technical reasons. Mm -hmm. Someone who meets you in the year, two, three, four, before you write your book, they can find you. The message is clear. There's an email list. You slowly build that. But I think more importantly is you learn how to communicate. You get confident enough to say, well, I write thrillers, but they're this kind of thriller. And you know, you know what it's like? It's like if you took Strawberry Shortcake meets, you know, Indiana Jones, that's my books. So, you know, you find interesting ways of describing that. You describe your bio, you direct people somewhere, and you learn about your audience. And what that means is that if you do it a year or more ahead of your publication, you are working that out. By the time your book comes around and someone says, oh, I have a friend at the Today Show and they want you on the show. You're not like imposter syndrome crazy. You're not like, you understand who you are, what you're about, how to talk about the book. You understand all the other authors in your genre. You've talked to readers before. You're like, I'm ready for this. I'm ready for this moment. And that's why I encourage people to do it well ahead because the opposite is they say, no, 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 no. I have to write the book. Then I've got to edit the book. Then I've got to publish the book. Dan, then I'm ready. Then is the only appropriate time to do marketing. At that point, you're three to six months before a launch. You're freaking out because it's your big chance. You've got none of the foundation. And you're sort of now at that point grasping at straws. And the only thing you can do is what you don't want to do. You're going to join Twitter. You're going to say, everyone, everyone follow me. And my book's coming out. And here's a free copy. And because at that point, it's a panic. And that's not really fun for anyone. No. And that's back to what I was reading on your website. It's, it's all about connecting with the person. So I think when you're writing and creating that website, it helps you uh, find your, your audience, as you said, who you naturally uh, communicate with. And then if you're at that panic moment, you can ask them, well, do you know anybody <laughs> who would be interested in my book and they can share it. It's more natural rather than a be my friend, be my friend, be my friend. Uh, it yeah. is. It also gives you more different nodes that lead people in. So when you're able to explain what you write and why you write it, you start really actually bringing all the stuff up and we can think about your end goal. Like visualize your biggest dream. Your biggest dream is the book comes out and it's a smash. And they invite you, I'm thinking of a specific event. You're, you're invited to speak at, you know, this huge, you know, amphitheater in New York City. And another famous author is going to interview you. Right. What are you going to talk about for an hour? It's not going to just be <laughs> nothing. They're going to ask about your journey about your inspiration. They're gonna ask about writing process. They're gonna ask about other authors that you love or movies or themes. It's like, this is the kind of stuff that a lot of early authors say, well, I'm not gonna do, no one cares about my process and I'm not an expert anyway. Or, well, it's not about me, it's about the book. And yet, if you look at every well-known author and you look at, you can go on YouTube, look at all the talks that are out there, look at Q and A's on Reddit, look at all their author platform stuff. People care about, the writing process. Because when I watch someone who creates, I'm, it's inspiring me. Everyone wants to create. Every mechanic, every plumber, every HR rep, everyone who's checking out the food store, they have that job, but they dream of creating something else. And even though they might not want to write a novel, they're interested in that process. Right. because it's representative of who they are inside. And when you work this stuff out, when you're able to explain that on a website and develop it in a newsletter and share that, one, you're finding a lot of ways to communicate. It's not just, hey, I'm writing a book. No, oh, it's Tuesday, I'm still writing a book. There's themes in that book. There's themes of who you are. There's the fun stuff like cat videos. There is people you know and you can reshare. All this other stuff comes out of that. And I do think that it can start with something simple like a website of just saying, this is who I am. 
this is what I'm creating and this is why I'm creating it. And from there, it kind of grows. That's like the first seeds that you're planting. And so this is all taking them back. Now you had mentioned one of your, your points on what makes a great website and great, you create this author platform that you want to lead people somewhere. Or what exactly are we referring to? I mean, this is really the trick, right? If you think about this whole idea of, of a marketing funnel and the traditional marketing funnel, it's the idea that the, the sale process is not a one-step thing where you say, I've got something for sale and then people buy it. If you think of how hard business is, the business of publishing, it's the idea of like a marketing funnel to wider at the top and goes to a, a point at the bottom, but it's like awareness, mm -hmm. consideration, people testing it out, people maybe buying, but the bottom of that funnel is not a sale. The mm -hmm. sale is in the middle of the funnel because after that, they are hopefully reading your book after they bought it. Hopefully they're reviewing it. Hopefully they're then advocating for it with word of mouth. Then maybe they're following you to the next book. Then they're, oh, I serve on a board at a, a small writing conference. We want to invite you to speak. Mm -hmm. So it really changes how you think about it because it's not just point of sale. Most books that get bought do not get read. They <laughs> sit on the shelf and people are overwhelmed and they can't get to it. So with leading people somewhere, it's not to just throw up a website and then run away. It's to think... How can I develop a relationship with them? How can I keep sharing something? So it leads them to an email newsletter or it, email, it leads them to Instagram. It leads them to a place where they can stay connected with you, where they can learn more about you, where you can share something. And you're, I talk about this a lot because I'm very sensitive that most people are introverts or they have personal boundaries. And I am an advocate for that. You can have very strong boundaries about what you talk about or how often or where you share. But within those boundaries is a universe of what you can talk about that alludes to your writing, the themes of what you write about, what you love reading, how you got into this, all of these different things. And I think a lot of people fall flat because they put up a website it leads nowhere or it leads to a newsletter list that they never, ever, ever send a newsletter out to. And I don't think there's an author I've ever heard talk about their history with where they didn't say something like, I wish I'd started sooner with a newsletter list or I wish I'd kept people going because what you realize is that if you're playing the long game of authorship and everyone is playing the long game of authorship, it's like when you can pick up a new subscriber, a new reader, a new follower, one at a time each week. Well, that sounds like nothing maybe to some of you now, but over the course of three years, that's hundreds of people. And these are people who like you and are following you and you then have something to start with. It is a radically different thing to launch a book with a zero email list or mm -hmm. zero followers than if you have a hundred people who actually know you and actually like your stuff. Right. Like think about that. If 20% 20 of, 20 of them leave a review, it feels so much better at the end of your launch week to have 20 reviews on Amazon than to have zero. It's like such a profound difference. No, it, 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 it's huge. And it's that connection. It is, I mean, it, a lot of that is validation. I, you know, I'm hearing, you know, finding your confidence, uh, being aware of who you are, being honest and, and conveying that and being, uh, you know, naturally attractive to other people in, in a way that's staying real to yourself. Um, you had mentioned to show up as a real person and I had been looking, I, I encourage everyone to, to go to your website, webromedia.com and check out Dan's bio there because it's quite interesting, the philosophy. I, I really like it. And it, I, you're really sharing with us today what you are doing. And that's, uh, it's great to see it because we can talk about it because I've seen your bio, I, I know exactly what you're talking to and I'm on your, your email list. So I know the pictures and the, the information and the stories and it feels very natural now to speak with you. So can you expand a little bit on that, on how you show up as a real person and, and maybe some step by steps that people can start implementing? I mean, this is something that I think a lot of us, for good reasons, we hide. We hide because... I have a chapter in my book about this, that I mean, the biggest challenge is the social fear. I tend to think that all of us are still that high school kid walking into the lunchroom for the first time with the cold fish ticks, seeing all the tables of people that seem like they've naturally sorted themselves into groups and that you don't quite fit and you don't know what to say and you're wearing the wrong thing, all that stuff. We all feel that way. And I've now seen, because we're in this golden age of podcasts and YouTube, I've now seen enough interviews with the most famous and successful people people you can imagine. And you realize that they are up at night 
unable to sleep because of imposter syndrome. To get back to the thing, it's because we, we want to engage with people. Yes, the work that they create matters. That art will live long after we're all gone. So I get that the art, the writing, the book is the first thing. But the way into it is the human way. It's, it's understanding why someone created it. It's understanding the journey. It's hearing them talk about it. And I think we see so many examples around us, like TED Talks are a good example. And, you know, I was listening to a podcast with Brene Brown the other day, and she was one of the early super viral TED Talks. And one, her topic is really good, but it was the idea of she embodied it. When she tells a story about her being vulnerable, it is different than me reading her research about vulnerability. And when you look at what is social media, it's easy for people to scoff at it. It's easy to say, well, I'm not, I'm, I'm not young and I'm not pretty and I don't know how to do this stuff. But you look at all these examples, it's nothing to do with that. It's that we engage with faces, with eyes, with expression, with voice. We, we do it with what I said before, communication and trust. I think about this across what we're talking about here. I mean, the example I always think about is we don't hire the best plumber. We hire the plumber that we know their phone number, they're going to show up and that we like them. You know, it's, it's not always about that. So we follow these people on Instagram or whatever. It's because they're the people we, we resonate with. This idea of showing up as a person, the practical aspect is if you have a website, if you have um, even a newsletter, social media, have a photo of yourself. Not because I, I think you need to look perfect or anything like that to feel overexposed because I engage with a person. That's why with all of what I do, I do a ton of video because it's the, the thing that showcases my connection to you. I could sit here and give you a laundry list of all of my, my physical defects of like the receding hairline and the bags under my eyes and the weird blotches on my face and the lisp and the crooked teeth and all that. And all that stuff is objectively true, but it doesn't matter. You either trust me because, not because of what I'm saying in print, but because of the way I talk, the way I share it, the backstory. And this is how people grow a following. It's also how they go from saying, well, I don't read thrillers to hearing your story and hear how you talk about it and they grow and they become a part of your journey. Mm -hmm. I've had so many people come together in like a mastermind group I run where they read different things, but they get to know each other and they become the biggest advocates for their books. Right. And when you look at what you can do on a website, that's a part of it. One of the most important pages is the about page. Um, you gave my about pages example and I appreciate that, but I worked hard to put myself out there and it's really long. It's, <laughs> and the way that I would encourage you to structure it if you're freaked out about that is you can start that about page with one paragraph, you know, and that paragraph is the, the professional thing. You know, Dan Blank is a writer who blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And then if someone, that's all they need, they can stop reading. But they can keep scrolling. And if you look at, uh, you know, some of the best author pages, they keep scrolling where they tell you about their background, they, their history, why they write, their influences, the fun stuff. Mm -hmm. What that does is it gives you more to glom onto. I can't even tell you how many authors will say, yeah, I mean, I picked up a fan and they, yeah, they kind of read what I write, but then they found out that I have dachshunds and they have dachshunds too, or running and they run too. Um, it's these little funny things that basically put us at the intersection of each other. And this is like how we have friends. I mean, go back to your whole life and think about how did you have friends in grade school and college and your career, all of that. It's proximity, it's shared interest, it's they were funny, it's that they, were, um, they weren't funny, but they were deep. You know, they did these posts on Instagram that were deep and long and you resonated with it. And I think that you sharing who you actually are is far more interesting than you sharing the minimum you think you have to add, the most vanilla, boring thing because it makes you feel like an author and doesn't make you feel exposed. Yeah. I don't want to feel exposed, but I think that there's an opportunity that we have, which is to show up who you are, to be helpful and to be generous and to communicate what you create and why. And I see too many people put a muzzle on themselves and it just, it kills me. It's like, this is the whole thing. The whole thing is that you are a unique human being. You are creating something unique in all of history. Mm -hmm. Just, just share that. Just share that. That's all that this is. And let magic happen after that. I just want to stop right there. <laughs> I think this is, I mean, really that's authenticity. It's, it's connecting. And I think we, we really 
appreciate that. I think that's good because it is hard to be honest. And I think maybe it's hardest to start with ourselves, as you mentioned. So building your platform and, and your website and your about page at the beginning, long before the book and creating the, the followers and the, the platform, as we call it, and finding our different medias and making sure that we keep that contact. And, you know, I'm one of those people too, that you start that, that newsletter and then you go, oh, well, you know, they've moved on, but did they really? And, you know, recently I've realized that people still connect, you know, you can send out that email to a dead list and um, they, they say, oh, it was really great. And you're like, wow, that was five years ago or something. <laughs> wow. You know? and What's they, funny, I think of so many people I follow on social media and I'll be like, why am I following this person? Right. I don't remember why, but they are now a part of my life. The idea of unfollowing them it's like severing a person from your life. And I'm like, I have no desire to do that. I, I like having them in my life. I, you know why? Because I like their dog. Their dog is so great. You know, it's just the <laughs> silly things that we do. Yeah, and, and, and it really does, it connects us. So I, I, I love that, the, the reality that we've put on this today. I think that on this podcast, we've talked so much about mindset and um, just different things. But today we're talking about people and humanity and who we are and how to be creative. And I, and I really love that. So thank you so much. And I really want to encourage everyone who's listening today to reach out to Dan. His name is Dan Blank. is at wegrowmedia.com. And you also have a podcast. And uh, tell us a little bit where we can find you more because yeah. I think you are connecting. Very well. Yeah, thank you. I mean, it's really what I do. So I do a weekly email newsletter, comes out every Friday. You can see that on my website. I've done that every week for 15 years. There's an essay, it's a photo of my family. It's, it really is, you know, all my thoughts on authorship and marketing and connecting, but it really is what I'm expressing every week. Mm -hmm. I have a weekly podcast called The Creative Shift with Dan Blank, and that's where I interview authors and illustrators. And it really is about the risk that we take to create and to share. I'm active on Twitter and Instagram at Dan Blank. And again, I show up there with the same types of things. And I have my book, Be the Gateway, which is a really wonderful guide to a lot of the stuff. I have the sequel to it coming out later this okay. year. So I'm excited about that. You can follow along. And then I, yeah, I do a bunch of programs and consulting with all these topics as well. And that's all on the website. That's great. And I really think that, you know, I think we can all feel safe in your hands here. So thank you so much. <laughs> You. for sharing your time with us today and coming to Publishing Power and letting us just be a part of this creative thought process because I can say that you've stirred a lot of thoughts in my mind today long before we started speaking but having this one-on-one -on -one, it is it's a personal connection so I appreciate it thank you so much Dan thank you